Okay. <laughs> hey everyone, it's me, Sarun. I uh, just wanted to... Before you freak out, alright, this video is about my LASIK eye surgery experience. And what you see over here, <laughs> uh, don't freak out, it's just bruising from the procedure. And I know it looks freaky to some people, but it's actually normal. Uh, it's going to go away in about two to three weeks, just so you know. But let's get started. Just kept getting messages on Facebook, on Instagram about my experience. And I just wanted to make a video just to answer some questions of what I went through. Please note that everyone's experiences have been different. But okay, let's get started. All right. So I'm going to run down my quick history of my eye situation. I've had prescription eyeglasses since I was in fourth grade, nine years old. I would say that I did not start wearing them consistently until after 18 years old though. After I turned 18, I always wore my glasses to see just the drive, to see the bulletin board and anything, blackboard or whatever. Movies, I had to always wear my glasses since then. I could see, if I didn't wear my glasses, I could only see up to here, like not even joking. It would have to be in front of my face. Or another example is a laptop. Like if I had my laptop, if I was watching a movie and the laptop was on my chest, I, it was still blurry. I would have to still wear my glasses even though my laptop screen was right here. So that's how poor my eye vision was. I also have double astigmatism. So both eyes has astigmatism. Uh, if you have astigmatism yourself, you know it's difficult to see at nighttime. Sometimes some images are never that sharp. Uh, so I had that other issue as well. So having poor vision, I couldn't pee without my glasses. I couldn't, I couldn't do a lot of things without my glasses. And those who also experience this poor vision, you know, you wake up, the glasses are never fully clean. You always got to keep wiping them. You always have, when you wake up, you have to search on the bed before you go anywhere and do anything. You always needed the glasses, so it's always been difficult. Contact lenses, they said, oh, well, you know, I waste so much money on contact lenses. I hate the, I hate wearing them in general. They always dried out my eyes. And I never wore them two or three days in a row. Uh, I've only worn them for like one day and then I'll forget about them because I prefer glasses. And all of a sudden they dry out or they get dirty, right? And that's a waste of money because they cost a good amount of money. Um, but, so that's my uh, history for vision. Fast forward again from Nine years old, I'm 36 years old right now, mid 30s, and my coworker at work, she had gotten it done uh, in 2007. She, her vision's still great. She never had to get a tune-up or anything like that. Some people do need a tune-up after LASIK, but she was really vouching for it. And having someone you know personally going through LASIK, it's really helpful because I've heard about LASIK for many, many years. I just never had like a direct person in my life that actually had it done, and if I did, I didn't know, <laughs> but she, you know, we see each other every day, so it was great to give her, get some feedback from her. She was a cheerleader. She kept saying, hey, she got it done at LASIK Plus at King of Prussia. Uh, and that's when I scheduled my consultation. The consultation process was completely free. And during that process, you actually learn more about LASIK and they do about five to six different tests on your eyes, about your vision, the pressure, er anything and everything that I don't know completely about, they did to make sure that I qualify for LASIK surgery. And coming to that is, I didn't realize you had to qualify to get LASIK surgery. I always thought it was like a business where, hey, they just want your money, any money could get it done, kind of like a boot, boot job, no offense. Uh, if you got it done, I'm just saying. Um, I didn't know there was a prerequisite and also if you have any illnesses. If you're interested in what makes you qualify, because you could get rejected, not everyone is able to get LASIK. And if you are interested in finding out specifics of what would deter you from not being qualified, look up it online, there's a lot. Um, two that comes to my mind was if you have an autoimmune disease and also if you have like diabetes. Some people with diabetes aren't able to get um, LASIK eye surgery for some reason. Um, I know another person who has chronic dry eye, they can't get LASIK either if your eyes are always dry because it impacts the healing process when it's dry, inflammation and all that. But again, each person is different. That's why if you're interested, you should go get the consultation uh, to know for sure instead of just pondering and wondering if you actually qualify, right? So after I did my consultation, which at the very end, they shared that you qualify. This is great. Congratulations. Uh, and they simply asked when I would like to schedule or, or if I was interested in moving forward, payment plan and scheduling for the actual procedure. I decided to do the procedure um, three weeks later instead of that, that weekend because um, it was that fast. The I had the, I think I had the 
consultation Monday or Tuesday and they were open that Friday to actually do the procedure, I just had to wait a little bit because I need to mentally prepare myself. Um, but yeah, fast forward after consultation, uh, the week of my actual procedure, I had caught COVID. You cannot get LASIK eye surgery if you have COVID because you know, you don't want to spread it. The all the dilemma during my COVID quarantine was that I had caught conjunctivitis, AKA pink eye. And I was freaking out. I was like, oh man, do I have, cause I had to reschedule already because of COVID. Am I gonna have to wait and reschedule because I have pink eye? Uh, luckily during the quarantine, it was already like a whole week out um, and then a few more days. And they said that it's fine. Uh, it's been a while out and also the post procedure medicine is also an antibiotic and a steroid combination that will also deal with pink eye it's fine. I brought it up a bunch of times to them because I was freaked out. I didn't want pink eye to, to mess up my eyes if I went through LASIK. Um, but yeah, so essentially got past COVID, went into my newly scheduled appointment for my procedure to get LASIK eye surgery uh, this past Friday, right? May 27th, five days ago. Now, when you go to it, you um, uh, they do ask that you bring a person to drive you home afterwards because you're not going to be able to drive. I couldn't drive, right, afterwards, after the procedure. They also say that it takes about two to three hours, so inform your driver to, to go linger somewhere. They couldn't be in the office because of COVID and all that, so they had to go linger somewhere. What's funny was I think I was very lucky because I got in at, you know, my procedure, my whole appointment started at 9.30. I was out of the office within an hour and 15 minutes. The procedure itself is only about 15 minutes or less. Um, but then you know you have to go through the paperwork and they actually give you uh, a bag full of medicine that I'll show you later. Uh, the different types of medicine that you have to use post procedure for the next few months. Uh, and cutting into the actual procedure was, I was in the waiting room, they called my name up, I went into the back, they handed me a hairnet, they told me to text my friend, come in 15 minutes, and I'm anticipating she won't have to come back until another hour, two hours, maybe three hours. And they they just said, hey, 15 minutes, come on through. And then that really freaked me out because I, I didn't mentally prepare to just go right into the surgery room right then and there, but I did. So I told my friend, hey, come back in at least 20 minutes. I'm gonna be done. She was shook because she already made her way to her friend's house, which was 30 minutes away or so. And now she had to turn around and come back that fast. Uh, they walked me into the operating room uh, where I was greeted by the doctor and two other assistants. They instantly handed me two stress balls. Uh, the two stress balls were uh, imitation eyeballs, which is kind of funny. And you squeeze it during the, the operating to help relieve any anxiety you may have. I squeezed them. I squeezed those eyeballs throughout the whole time. Not that because I was going through pain, it's just I had to think about other things. Now, I'm gonna jump into what happened under the machine. There's two machines, by the way. One machine is the LASIK piece, and then if you have astigmatism, you actually have to walk over after the LASIK machine, you go to the astigmatism machine that fixes your astigmatism. But essentially, if you're interested in the details of the actual operation, I can't give that to you. I don't remember. It happened way too fast. And I'm not going to give you the right details of the systems and first step, second step. I won't be able to give you that. I'm just going to go off memory. That's my disclaimer. So walked in, two stress balls, hair net on, lay down. So I lay down and when you're laying down on the LASIK, you're looking up and the machine is just pointing down your face. You got, they, they fit into your, the machines in your face. Um, and they tell you to look at this green light, uh, which at first you see the green light. I'll end it there for now. They put this, one of my fears going in was that I would blink or shift my eyes because I can't keep it open during the surgery. You don't have to worry about that. They got this, this, this thing where they put in and stretch open your eyeballs and you cannot purposely close your eyes even when you tried. That thing just opens your eyes right open and it's like right up in there. So that relieved my stress of accidentally closing my eyes. They instantly put like the numbing drops right into your eyeball and they go right in. They don't pause, they put the numbing drops in your eyes and they go straight in. Essentially, again, disclaimer, this is just from memory, that is, it just went by so fast, I'm not probably giving the right step by step, but anyway. Then they put the eye drops, 
They tell you, look at this green light. They do their thing. I think the laser, there is a smoke smell. The, you hear this late machine laser sounds. And all of a sudden they say that you will black out. It'll go black. Your vision will go black for like one, two seconds. For me, and they're doing one at a time. For me, I didn't see blackness, darkness. It just looked like Vaseline over your eyeball. So if you can imagine wearing your glasses, just smearing a thick layer of Vaseline, that's what it felt like to me. So I didn't lose vision for a second to blackness. It was just like Vaseline. And I noticed looking up for the rest of the operation, it was just like that Vaseline. And I see, kind of, sort of see the green light. So I tried to keep it straight. And you're hearing noises, laser beams, you see lights. Um, you don't know what's going on really, but they're talking to you. They're explaining what's going on. They're telling you, the doctor's like, oh, you're doing great. Um, you, you do the thing. What I think is five to seven mi five minutes per eye, it felt like two minutes. Um, so after this eye is done, they go to the next and they do the same exact thing. Again, it felt like, I know it was probably like five minutes, but it felt way faster. Uh, and just to share, I was squeezing the balls during the whole time. And what kept me somewhat relaxed was thinking of my dad who passed away about a little over a year ago. And also my mom. And I was thinking, who's still alive. I, I kept thinking about them thinking, oh, they went through the genocide, the Cambodian genocide. They went through war. I'm just getting LASIK eye surgery. I can get through this. Um, making myself feel better. Reminding that, hey, my family's going through worse. So that helped me just thinking about the war and that this is just LASIK eye surgery. After that was done, they again, it was like real quick, really fast. They, they helped me up and walked me over to the astigmatism machine. And that's when I went under the astigmatism machine and they, 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 they fixed my astigmatism essentially. That was really fast, faster than the first process. They sat me up probably 12, 15 minutes in, like after the whole process. They took my cap, they, uh, they took the balls back, uh, and they said, oh, you're ready to go home. And I'm like, holy moly, that was it? That was crazy. Forgot to share, right before going in, in the waiting room, they give you a Tylenol PM, because you're supposed to sleep four to five hours after the procedure. So I did take a Tylenol PM, so I was already feeling a little groggy. It hit me pretty fast. But my friend took about 30 minutes to come in to come pick me up, so I had to go back to the waiting room to wait for her. Now, for the first 10 minutes, 15 minutes, I still had the numbing drops in my eyes, so I didn't feel anything yet. But the assistant, doc, the assistant that was there said that I'll start feeling some discomfort uh, and burning in about 10, 15 minutes. In the waiting room, it started hitting me, um, the discomfort and the burning. Essentially, to me, what it felt like was like sand is in your eyes. Uh, and there's grains of sand that's in there and I have my eyes closed but you can still feel it and tears are just dripping down your face for like hours right it just comes out on its own uh, and the burning sensation did come some people compared it to that I saw on YouTube to onion cutting I would say that I think the tears coming out it's like onion cutting but the sensation is somewhat burning but it's not the same type of burn the other funny thing was while I was in the waiting room after I kept blinking my eyes like this, and I kept it closed, but every time I blink, I would see a circle, like a glowing circle. And that, my only assumption is that's the incision they did on my cornea, because you know essentially you have to make the incision in the, in the eye. Again, look up the YouTube videos of the actual procedure. They do they do just cut the cornea, flip it open, and shoot lasers, and then they do their thing. But anyway, I saw the circle, so that was kind of cool. It was kind of like a phantom image that faded away. So while I'm waiting in my in the waiting room, waiting for my friend to pick me up, I did you know sit there with my sunglasses on, just opening my eyes like this, and I did notice that I already saw far away. So right after the procedure, even though it was like 20 minutes in, my vision was already starting to come into 2020 because I could see signs far away. I could see the clock down the hall. When my friend picked me up, she walked me to the car. I sat there. I'm like, we're on the highway and I can see road signs as I'm like slowly opening my eyes. Tears still flying, of course, because of the irritation. But yeah, that was pretty instant. I got, so got home, they tell you to sleep, take a nap, four to five hours, because your eyes need to heal, it needs to stay closed. Uh, the cornea, you know, all that stuff. Uh, and when you wake up after two to five hours of napping, you instantly go on to your medication, right? So after two to, after four to five hours of napping, sleeping, you go, you wake up and you go 
start your medication. My procedure was in the morning, so I woke up around one or two, and I'm gonna share with you the medicine. <laughs> so they give you this cool little bag. <laughs> it's just a tote, it ain't cool, it's just a tote bag. Um, but in it, they give you four things. All right, so the first thing they give you that they brought up was these shields. So every time you go to bed, when you go to sleep, you have to put these shields on with this tape. So they're for your eyeballs. So for the first week, I'm still using them at night. See that? They're kind of like eggshells. But you put them over your eye, and you use a sh you use the tape, and you, you literally have to tape it to your face because you can't touch your eyes. During this whole healing process, you cannot touch your eyes. The other sad thing is for the first week, you cannot get water near your eyes, which means you can't really shower or wash your face or shampoo for a week. That's crazy. A week. So the first two days, my head was already scratch itchy. Like, I'm like, damn. Um, but anyway, so that's the first thing they give you. Shields that you'll use for a week. And then they give you... Hey, where my, uh, where my eye drops go? And they give you this antibiotic uh, slash steroid eye drop. See that? It's called Moxie something something. But anyway, you use this for a whole week. Uh, it's to you know help with your eyeball not getting an infection. It's a steroid to help heal. Uh, but yeah, so the first two days you're using this every two hours. After the first two days, you go to four day or four times a day. Again for the first week. This is to help your eyes not get any infection and all that other great stuff. Then they also give you artificial tears. Blink. So you got I got three boxes of these. There's 25 in each, and you're supposed to use this, the directions say, once every hour or whenever you feel dry. So it's important so you could break off one, and so that, and each one, there's probably like, you could probably use one about six times, and then you toss it, because they don't have any preservatives, and this keeps your eyes moist. The healing process is critical with the moisture of your eyes. If you let it dry out, it's not, it's not good. And then the last thing, so yeah, so I have this for like the next two to three months. The last thing you use for two months is this, it's called Hydro Eye. And it's like a vitamin mixture thing that helps your eyes to make more tears on its own. Because during this healing process, during the after the procedure, your eyes aren't able to like make its own tears as often as it usually did so it's part of the healing process to keep your eyes moist so it's very critical to follow directions use this four times a day for the next two months keep your eyes moist with this and use this anti you know an uh, anti um, antibiotic and steroid eye drops for the first week uh, and that's the healing process right so again fridays that that's everything they gave me instantly when i woke up i started uh the pills you start the next day the very next day, I was already driving. So in le in 24 hours, you can go about and do whatever you want. I didn't believe that when I was what what completely you know believe it. I I, mean, I believe that that people were doing. But some YouTube videos said that they instantly went back to work. They did their thing. The very next day, I did the exact same thing. I thought I would need a little longer to heal, but I was able to drive already in 24 hours. I could see far. Just had to wear sunglasses when I'm outside avoid anything around my face uh the, so saturday went up, went to north office for a podcast recording sunday was my friend's wedding and then yesterday monday memorial day i took my nephews to roller skate and play in a roller skating place <laughs> with all these games and stuff so in general the healing process was fast i had my vision had 2020 really fast at least i think it's 2020 but so clear clear as if i it, it's amazing and today, which is Tuesday, I had my follow-up, my follow-up post-procedure um, appointment checkup. Uh, that's when, you know, obviously I have bruising in here still. It's going to take two to three weeks before it fades. So they did notice bruising. That red thing's just like, I guess, blood that's been left over. But I know I, I feel like I feel sore, um, but that will go away. Um, and then this eye, when they were doing me the test to make sure I could see clear, I couldn't see as clear and I found out that there was dryness here and it's crazy because I have been trying my best to use the eye drops. I have been like it's been I've been I, I, that's the, I'm really paranoid. I was doing the best I can 
and they saw dryness but also inflammation from the dryness which is you know not good luckily it's only a little bit but it was impacting the sharpness so they noticed this vision is great but this one's still kind of blurry because of that dryness I attest to it to one it's been hot as hell and I think it's because of my air conditioner and also the air conditioner in the car so at home I have an air conditioner in my window I angled it so the wind would blow elsewhere but I still feel a little a little gust so I think that at nighttime you know our eyes aren't completely shut I think that the air and the wind from the AC has been hitting my eye um, specifically this one for some reason and, and it kind of dried it out a little bit uh, and also driving uh, in the car my AC's on again I re-angled the wind the blowing away from my face but you know sometimes it just flows and catches up so I think that's why there's more dryness in this eye um, especially you know on the driver's side there's all the, I, I re-angled the two in front of me but the ones on this side it's still you know trying to go to the back and all that stuff but other than that you know I, I still have to make sure that my whenever I feel dry just instantly use up these tears like more is better than not right so don't don't be conservative the moment it feels um dry or use it every hour or whenever it feels dry use it so I'm trying to my best I don't I ain't trying to get no eye infection I'm trying to heal right but other than that um again uh sometimes I wake up the last few times I woke up or at nighttime before bed I look up at my ceiling and I'm thinking Man, I can't believe I went through LASIK eye surgery that's something really crazy in my mind that I went through the actual procedure. I've heard about it for many years and now my vision is great, right? I know it's only been five days and if you're interested in an update in two months after this medication is all done, maybe I'll do another video or whatever. Maybe I'll just post a comment or something. But yeah, uh, I would say if you're a glass eyeglass wearer and your vision has been poor, and you can't do anything without your glasses, when the zombie apocalypse hit, we might be the first in tragic, uh, disastrous situations that, you know, if our glasses break in the zombie apocalypse, we're done. We can't see nothing. And if you were out and about during a zombie apocalypse with contact lenses, that John's gonna dry out and you're gonna not be able to see because you got contact lenses on, you gotta pick that out. And if you don't have your glasses with you, what you gonna do? So yeah, anyway. <laughs> That's a side note. Uh, it was a great experience so far. Uh, again, everyone had um, different experiences and, and, and after effects. Online, I heard some people seeing halos, like basically big halos around certain lightings. Some people can't drive at night yet. Um, and all these other things. There's so many different things that people were experiencing. I would sh share that I haven't driven at night because of that fear, right? I think I've been traumatized from having astigmatism and hearing stories of people saying that during the healing process at least, Driving at night's a little difficult. I didn't want to risk it, so I ain't trying to drive at night. I try to get home as soon as possible before the sun sets. Uh, I do see glows around certain lightings. Um, people with stigmatism usually see those glows here and there, but this one's a different type of glow. It's like a very vibrant glow. Uh, it doesn't bother me. Um, so far, the only issue I have post-surgery is, again, the, dry, the dryness on this eye and also the, the bruising from this eye, which, you know, as long as I stick to it, you know my eyes will be get better again that was it um if you have any thoughts any questions about lasik definitely look it up yourself um there's different experiences out there to be had what i went through uh wasn't as you know similar to other people but again i had these things uh but i really really am happy that i went through lasik surgery lasik procedure with lasik plus uh and if you do decide to do it, they do have a referral plan. Uh, put down uh, a friend's name that referred you. Uh, me and my coworker, uh, you know, Room. So she's um, the person that I, I referred to as well. So if you're interested, make sure you DM me, and we'll talk about <laughs> referrals. Uh, and they give give uh, they give a little um, uh, incentive for those who refer to other people. Uh, right now I have zero, but anyway. That's pretty much it. LASIK Plus, thank you. Uh, and hopefully I heal better. Hopefully everything works out. If y'all are interested, again, do your thing. Peace out. Have a good day. Please stop this.